Ah, the smell of bread baking at St Fagan. Reminds me of the baking day when I was at my nines in Bethesda. Bread, butter and jam, toast made on the fire, bread and butter pudding. And that was just before lunch time. My gran always spread the butter on top of the loaf and then cut the bread afterwards. The butter would have been melted by the fire first, of course. She also used to make a bread poultice if anyone had an injury. It would be put on the wound to draw out the badness. Smells and tastes can take you right back. Are there any smells or tastes that make you think of another place and time? My nine made lovely Welsh cakes too, or bake stones as some people call them, named after the griddle they were cooked on, like this one from the museum's collection. Now in different areas of Wales, they can also be called Pica Bach, Tishan Thechwan or Pica Aramán. We used to call them Picks where they came from. Have you tried these cakes? What do you call them? What do you enjoy with your afternoon cuppa? Nine loved her sweet things, that was for sure. She drizzled everything with syrup or honey, even her fish and chips. Only joking. But did you know our museum in Cardiff has honey beehives on the roof, right in the heart of the city? Every autumn, the honey is harvested from the hives and sold in the museum shop. Nine would be at the front of the queue, I'm sure. Now, I never remember having honey as a child, but we definitely put a lot of sugar on things and in things. We even had sugar sandwiches for tea now and again. And my auntie still sprinkles sugar over her salad today. You wonder she hasn't got any teeth left. Do you remember having sugar or honey on food when you were growing up? If you have a garden or some outside space, you could throw some wildflower seeds and see if you can attract some honeybees. Ooh, who can resist a bar of chocolates? Nine used to buy me one every Friday as an end of the week treat when we called into the sweet shop. She had to have a bar as well, mind you. Five boys chocolate was her favourite. You don't see that around these days. My grandfather would send me to the shop to get a massive bar of dairy milk. And funnily enough, he never noticed that there was a few rows missing by the time it got back to him. Or if he did, he never said. By the way, have you heard the story about the old lady who always had a bowl of nuts out for when her friends visited? One day her friend asked her why she put them out, but never took any herself. Oh, I can't eat them, she said. Ever since I lost my teeth, all I can do is to suck the chocolate off them. Now I'd heard of coffee beans, but did you know that chocolate comes from cacao beans that grow in pods, like this one in the illustration? And did you know as well that the Latin name for chocolate, Theobroma, means food of the gods? I think my nine would have agreed with this description. Do you remember a trip to the sweet shop when you were younger? Do you remember any chocolate or sweet brands from your childhood? What was your favourite? After all that sweet stuff, I think we need something a bit more healthy. Ta-da! The humble but precious apple. Now Nine loved an apple, especially if it was baked into a pie covered in sugar. My gran would cut up an apple into slices on a plate and make a real meal out of it, with bread and butter sometimes. Seriously, though, look at these lovely specimens. Cox Camrag, Pig, Aderin, Croin Mochen and St Cecilia are all Welsh apple varieties. They grow well with the soil and weather here in Wales. My nine always said that you should never eat the pips or an apple tree would grow in your stomach. I was afraid to try it to see if it was true. Don't apple trees make you think of blossom in spring and the juicy fruit in autumn? I love this painting of apple blossom from the museum's collection. It reminds me of a nine's curtains too. Do you have a favourite fruit that you love to eat? Did you have this fruit as a child? Did you ever pick your own fruit from a garden or orchard? Of course, lovely Welsh apples make lovely Welsh cider. From around the 17th century onwards, Wales has been known for its cider making. Look at this oak cider barrel. It shows off the craft of the cooper who made the barrel. It was used for holding cider during harvest time.
Did you know people from all over Wales worked on farms over the summer and for the harvest? Very often they got paid in cider rather than money. Imagine the state some people would be in when they got home. Now in cold communities, cider was usually the Thursday night drink because it was cheaper than beer and you didn't get paid till the Friday. Now this doesn't look like a labourer's lunch to me. The piece of cheese is too big for a start. Now we've heard of a plowman's lunch, which could have been any worker's lunch. Bread, cheese, apple, even half an onion eaten like an apple, which I sometimes had at lunchtime. No wonder I didn't have many friends. What would you pack for a picnic lunch? Where would you like to go for a picnic? The beach, a mountain, countryside or somewhere else? Now these tins were coal miner snap tins or tommy boxes. Slate quarrymen also carried their lunches in these. Sandwiches usually had either cheese, tinned ham, corn dog, which is corned beef, jam or sometimes cold baked beans. On a Monday, it sometimes contained the remains of the Sunday roast. It was always said that the round end of the tin was for biscuits. I've heard that apples and oranges were also popular in the ground, although you'd have to keep them in your coat pockets hanging in the roadway as there were mice about, or even colliery horses who would steal food. Did you ever eat leftovers for another meal? What would you take in your sandwich box? Now my grandmother always liked to have the butter so thick on the bread she could see her teeth marks in it when she was biting it. My uncle was a milkman and his wife ran a small dairy in the back garden of the house. I don't know if they had their own brand, but some butter might have been printed with a design just like this one. My nine said that there were no fridges in her day, so there was cold storage in the pantry. The butter could be rock hard in winter or runny in summer. Do you prefer butter or margarine on your bread and toast? How do you like your toast done? Oh, I love a bit of cheese. Welsh people were always said to eat a lot of cheese. Welsh rarebit, or cow sweaty boppy, is still a popular dish. Now, cheese has always been popular. This is a Roman cheese press which was found in Usk. Did you know that the Roman name Isca came from the Welsh name from the river Usk? Or ask. How many dishes can you think of that are made with cheese? How many cheese varieties can you name? Are any of them made in Wales? Now my granny said when she was growing up that there'd always be a big saucepan of cowl or broth simmering away in the kitchen. Leftovers and tough meat like mutton would be added to the pot. Sometimes it could be a sheep's head. But she always asked the butcher to keep the eyes in so the meal would see them in through the week. My tide would go snaring rabbits and bring them home for nine to skin and cook. She'd make a pot of rabbit stew. Lobscos was a favourite in the north, a traditional dish of meat, potatoes and any other available vegetables. Everything was cooked together in a pot like this one. This was often super chwaral, quarryman's supper the main meal of the day for the quarryman and his family. If you had to make a pot of stew or cowl, what would be your favourite ingredients to add to the pot? This coffee machine was brought over from Italy by the Rapaiotti family in 1921. They ran cafes in the Avon Valley, Swansea and Portalbot. Bracchi, Sidoli, Filgoni and Carini are also well-known cafe owners who set up in Wales in the early 1900s. I remember the Italian cafes when I was growing up. Um, you could have a cup of coffee or tea, but also Oxo was really popular. And if you wanted something to eat, you could have a steam pie or pasty, which was heated up with a steam pipe from the coffee machine. He also served homemade ice cream, but it was full of crunchy ice crystals. The one thing they didn't serve was Italian food for some reason. Do you prefer coffee or tea? How do you take yours? Do you remember drinking these when you were younger 